Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Monday, September 16th, 2024. South Carolina has had a share of earthquakes in the last few days. Most recently, today was a magnitude 2.2 near Pageland, South Carolina. There was also yesterday a magnitude 2.5 near Elgin, South Carolina, and a 2.1 in that same location. Going to Google Earth, we'll go to the location of the most recent earthquake by Page Lynn, right up over there. And then we got all the earthquakes that have been happening in Elgin and elsewhere. Yeah, there's been a lot of earthquakes. Normally, South Carolina, according to the South Carolina Geological uh, Survey, says they only have about 15 earthquakes a year. But according to Volcano Discovery, there has been um, probably 37 quakes so far this year. More than double the um, average number. Yeah, yeah. And this is all caused because of the reactivating faults um, there in South Carolina. Yeah, all kinds of them. Most of them have been about a magnitude 2.0. I think that's, well, here's a 1.2, a 2.1. Yeah, you can go through the list and look at all the different earthquakes. I believe that because of the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field coming for the next uh, polar reversal, the reversal of the magnetic field, um, prior to the last magnetic field reversal, yeah, the continents actually moved, and uh, I think that's got a lot to do with all these earthquakes. They also have posted that since 2024, South Carolina had 20 earthquakes of a magnitude 3.0 or larger, uh, 13 quakes of a magnitude 2 and 3, and 7 quakes um, below um, a magnitude 2. But down over here, yeah, you can see we got a map showing all the earthquakes um, they're saying that there's been 37 earthquakes this year a lot of people move into south carolina every day here's a map of the different faults that run through south carolina let me pull this over and a lot of people probably don't understand the threat of a large earthquake the largest earthquake that south carolina has had was at 9.51 p.m. Tuesday, August 31st, 1886. Um, that was the largest East Coast earthquake recorded that ripped through Charleston with the uh, epicenter near Somerville. And it lasted for 60 seconds. Yeah, can you imagine shaking back and forth for 60 seconds? About 100 people were killed. And over 2,000 buildings were destroyed and caused about $6 million in damage. And that's when it's been adjusted for inflation. They also say there at the uh, South Carolina Geological Society that magnitude 5s probably only happen about once every 175 years. But here you can see in 1913, in fact, there was a magnitude 5.5 by Union. In 2016, there was a magnitude 5.5 um, that was near Edgefield, South Carolina. 1913, near Somerville, a magnitude 6.6. .6. And let's see, we got 19 or 1886, a 6.9. But they now believe that that earthquake was actually probably a magnitude 7.3. So you can see that large earthquakes actually happen uh, more often than what they're telling people. I don't. I think they just don't want people to uh, panic, get all paranoid. Well, you don't have to panic. You don't have to be paranoid. You just get yourself ready for a major earthquake. Have things bolted to the wall. Have a first aid kit, medical supplies, food and water. Um, a, a bug out kit and don't forget about your important documentations. This most recent earthquake, the magnitude 2.2, that one occurred at 
3 a.m. local time. Four people have reported that they felt the magnitude 2.2. USGS gave it an intensity level of 4. On Saturday, there was a magnitude 2.1. That one occurred at 2.46 p.m. Saturday night, and that was uh, four miles southeast of Elgin. 33 people said they felt that earthquake. Now, this magnitude 2.5, USGS originally said was a magnitude 2.7. 221 people said they felt it. Um, it was given an intensity level of 4, which means it was felt indoors by many, outdoors by a few. At night, some may have been woken up. Dishes, windows, doors were rattling. Automobiles would have been rocking noticeably. Did you feel that earthquake? They probably downgraded it, revised it because of the lack of felt reports that were sent in. Uh, this earthquake happened at 6.01 p.m. So we have uh, 35 reports there um, saying it was intensity level 4. Intensity level 2. Let me zoom in. Um, Fort some, uh, some, some military base over here had the most reports. Let's see. Intensity level 3. Intensity level two, three, three, more three. Let's see, 14 there for three and two from there. So what's going on? Unlike many other parts of the world where earthquakes occur along boundaries between tectonic plates, such as the Pacific Ring of Fire, um, South Carolina results from reactivation of ancient geological structures associated with much older tectonic events uh, such as the building of the Appalachian Mountains. Like I said, we got the Atlantic Ocean slowly moving towards the west and we're going to see more and more earthquakes just like they've been having them on the um, west coast of the United States because of this reactivation and the movement of the tectonic plates. These are all what's called inter- plate earthquakes. Earthquakes where they used to never have them. Yeah, South Carolina used to only have 15 earthquakes a year. Most of those not felt by people. And now it's up to, what, 36 so far this year? These interplate earthquakes that you guys are feeling there in South Carolina are the result of stress transmitted inward from the boundaries of the North American plate. Um, in this state, Quakes may occur along ancient plate boundaries where existing faults have been reactivated as the tectonic stress is released. A lot of stress coming from the Atlantic Ocean slowly moving underneath the North American plate. And it's not just South Carolina. It's the entire east coast of the U.S. How many of you remember that earthquake uh, where the Washington Monument had all that damage. I believe it was in 2011 and that was only a magnitude 5.8. So when is South Carolina going to have its next large earthquake? Well, earthquakes really can't be predicted. They're working on trying to figure out, you know, maybe uh, foreshocks. Any earthquake can be a foreshock for something much larger. Example, today's 2.2 uh, could be a foreshock. For a much bigger one. People need to realize that strong quakes um, within South Carolina borders or in other states along the East Coast could adversely affect other states and cause major damage. You need to be prepared for that. Homes with brick and mortar need to be um, yeah, built where they can be protected more. Maybe with plywood on the inside. Um, holding up that you know, that brick walls, um, what they call soft structures where there's large spaces underneath on the first floor. Those need to be retrofitted. Have large furniture bolted to the walls, such as hot water heaters, bookcases, maybe your refrigerator, safety locks on cupboards, or even what they call earthquake putty for things that are on the shelves. 
There is a lot of simple, cheap things that you can do to prepare for an earthquake. Are you prepared? Do you have a bug out bag? Do you have medical supplies? Uh, you know, all the basics. Do you have that? Are you prepared? Please put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.